Aisha and other sources tell us that Muhammad was bewitched by an ally of the Jews who casted a spell on him. The spell lasted for at least a year. Let's take a look at these strange allegations. And of course, we have a number of evidence from Islamic sources, believe it or not, that points to the fact that Muhammad was bewitched and Muhammad himself even was disturbed by uh, certain things that happened to him. And it was reported that he acknowledged that something like this happened to him. With me here in studio to unpack all of that is our dear brother, David Wood. David. So Muhammad was bewitched, right? That, that's that's not according to me or you. That's according to the Muslim sources. But th there's basically an array of spiritual problems with Muhammad. And you put them all together and you've got some serious, serious spiritual concerns about this man. Um, so you can just take, I mean, you can go all the way back to his childhood where uh, the, the family that he lived with uh, thought that he was demon-possessed and gave him mm -hmm. back to his mother. Um, but just going to his first revelation that he received when he was in the cave, uh, in the end, he had an encounter with uh, what what later he claimed was the angel Gabriel. Um, and, but his initial reaction to it, before other people told him what's going on, uh, we read uh, in Surat Rasulullah, so this is Ibn Ishaq, when it was the night on which God honored him with his mission and showed him mercy and showed mercy on his servants thereby, Gabriel brought him the command of God. He came to me, said the apostle of God, while I was asleep with a coverlet of brocade whereon was some writing and said, read. I said, what shall I read? He pressed me with, he pressed me with it so tightly that I thought it was death. Then he let me go and said, read. I said, what shall I read? He pressed me with it again so that I thought it was death. Then he let me go and said, read. I said, what shall I read? He pressed me with it a third time so that I thought it was death and said, read. I said, what then shall I read? And that's when uh, he gets the first revelations of the Quran. So uh, Jibril here is pressing him so hard and squishing him so hard that he thinks he's 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 dying from this, mm -hmm. and that is uh, not the not the standard way of angels delivering revelation. Uh, but before Muhammad was actually convinced by other people, his wife and her cousin, that this is he's actually a prophet, he interpreted this very differently. Um, so this is what he says in Ibn Ishaq, page 106. He says, Now none of God's creatures was more hateful to me than an ecstatic poet or a man possessed. I couldn't even look at them. I thought, woe is me, poet or possessed. Never shall Quraysh say this of me. I will go to the top of the mountain and throw myself down that I, might, that I may kill myself and gain rest. So whatever he encountered, he thought it was demonic. Uh, and and the, the poet and the possessed are kind of in the same category. They believe that poets were like in, were like inspired by these uh, by these uh, jinn or spirit beings that that gave them poetry. Mm -hmm. So he thinks he's actually possessed, and his reaction is to try to kill himself. So Muslims think of this, you know, as a, as a wonderful night when Muhammad starts receiving revelations. Whatever he encountered, he's the only one there, whatever he encountered in that cave, he was convinced that it was demonic and squishing him, and he ran out of there depressed and suicidal and tried to kill himself as a result of it, concluding that he was demon-possessed. And I would just have to say, sometimes your first impression is the correct one. Exactly, and people should have listened to him, especially his wife. And uh, that, that's that's a problem we're dealing with. So there is a story that he was literally bewitched. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's 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 in the hadith as well. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, if, if we're going on, if we if we go chronologically, there's the other issue. There's the issue of the satanic verses. That's have you true. heard about the satanic verses? Of course. It's so amazing. I actually have 50 sources, 50 Muslim sources on the satanic verses now, 50. And I say, I say, I say that because it's so amazing that they just dismiss this story. It's a fabrication. No one would have fabricated this story 
if you had fabricated this story, you'd have been killed for saying something like this about Muhammad. Exactly. And it's certainly, certainly you're not going to have everyone say, oh, let's all, let's all share different versions of the story too. The only explanation for this being in so many sources, especially so many early sources, is that it's authentic and that Muslims knew that it was authentic and that's why they passed it on. Later on, Muslims, because of a theological agenda, uh, the, originally the doctrine of God's protection of the prophets uh, simply meant that, that God is not going to allow his prophets to persist in error. Mm -hmm. So there was no conflict between saying that Muhammad got tricked by Satan and then later, you know, was, was brought out of that. Later, however, Muslims eventually changed the meaning of the doctrine so that it's uh, God's, uh, God's going to protect his prophets from any major error. And so that forced them to rewrite history. Um, but we still, we still know what the early sources say before their theology caused them to um, omit uh, stories. And basically the idea was uh, one day Muhammad was receiving revelations as part of Surah 53 of the Quran, but he was feeling really bad that his tribe hadn't converted to Islam and he wanted his people mm -hmm. to convert to Islam. And as he got to the part of the uh, Quran verse that refers to Alat, Alusa, and Manat, these are three pagan goddesses, uh, that's when Satan jumped in, according to the story, and tricked him into promoting belief in and prayers to these three pagan goddesses. Mm -hmm. So Muhammad delivered this revelation as revelation of the Quran. It said that you can, right. you can pray to three pagan goddesses and those three pagan goddesses can basically carry your prayers and to intercede, Allah. Yeah, we'll yeah. We'll so they, they intercede for you. And so Muhammad received these revelations. He delivered them to his followers. He bowed down in honor of the revelation. His followers bowed down in honor, in honor of the revelations too. But this time, the pagans were so overjoyed that they bowed down too. <laughs> so you got right, they're pagans celebrating that he acknowledged their gods. Yeah. So pagans were bowing down because of the 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 great confirmation of their paganism that Muhammad delivered to them. Uh, a little later, however, Muhammad came back and said, "Sorry, everyone, the devil made me do it." But notice. Uh, that really means that Muhammad's desires influenced his revelations because right. he was wanting wanting those revelations. Two, it means that Muhammad couldn't tell the difference between a revelation from God and a revelation from Satan. And so, wait a minute, if your prophet can't tell the difference between a revelation from God and a revelation from Satan, I'd, I'd say you, you already have some serious problems. And what do Muslims do about this story, which would be enough for us to reject Muhammad if this is all we knew about him? Um, what do they do? They throw, they throw the story out. We don't like that, so we'll just, we'll just pretend it never happened, which is what they do with almost everything we bring up about Muhammad. Now, the, the, the story you're referring to actually recurs in, in, in all, all kinds of places in the Hadiths and in the Sirah. I'll give a couple of examples. Sahih al-Bukhari, number 3175. Uh, Aisha narrated, once the prophet was bewitched, so that he began to imagine that he had done a thing which, in fact, he had not done. Mm -hmm. now, why is this interesting? Well, it, it, when we title a video, A Bewitched Prophet, something about Muhammad being bewitched, Muslims will get upset. Hey, it's not us calling Muhammad bewitched. It was Aisha calling Muhammad bewitched. The Muslim sources call Muhammad bewitched. Sahih al-Bukhari calls Muhammad bewitched. Bewitched means you're, you've, you've got a magic spell cast on you that's, that's, uh, that's, that's causing you to behave in certain ways. Um, Sahih al-Bukhari, number 5765, Aisha narrated, magic was worked on Allah's apostle so that he used to think that he had had sexual relations with his wives while he actually had not. Then one day he, he said, oh Aisha, do you know that Allah has instructed me concerning the matter I asked him about? Two men came to me and one of them sat near my head and the other sat near my feet. The one near my head asked the other, what is wrong with this man? The latter replied, he's under the effect of magic. The first one asked, who has worked magic on him? The other replied, Labed bin al-Assam, a man from Bani Zareq, who was an ally of the Jews and was a hypocrite. The first one asked, what material did he use? The other replied, a comb, and the hair stuck to it. So uh, so this, this uh, ally of the Jews and a hypocrite wanted to take out Muhammad, so he got someone to give him Muhammad, to get Muhammad's hairbrush so he could get a hair off it and right. use the hair to cast a magic spell on Muhammad. And watch what happens. This is in Ibn Ishaq. 
Ibn Asak reports that Labin, uh, Labid bin Assam bewitched the apostle of God so that he could not come at his wives. And then Guillaume adds a footnote. Guillaume is the, uh, the, the translator, adds a footnote that according to tradition, the spell lasted for a year. And I've seen various, tra- uh, various traditions saying that it lasted from between six months to two years. So between six months to two years, <laughs> this guy was able, this magician was able to give Muhammad delusional thoughts and false beliefs about things he was doing with his wives, and then he couldn't have sex with them, and then he would think he did this when he actually hadn't. And this is all because a guy got a hair out of his hairbrush and That's used right. it to cast, cast. And this is this is the guy who's under Allah's protection. constant protection. This how, is just how, how much of the Quran was revealed during these uh, one or two years. Yeah, they're giving these revelations, and then Muhammad's <laughs> Muhammad's a victim of magic. So so he thinks he's possessed. He's admittedly delivering revelations from from the devil. And of course, he's he's bewitched by a magic spell. And this is the guy we're all supposed to trust whenever he says anything. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I know there is more uh, to this and maybe we can unpack more of this in another video. But for now, I hope at least what was shared with everyone here uh, proves the point that we're dealing with a just normal human being like the rest of us who actually uh, was bewitched by uh, the a magician who used like a piece of hair of Muhammad and hence, the magician overpowered Allah and his protection of his prophet. And the prophet was even imagining that he did things. I wonder how much he imagined also of revelations that he thought he received since Satan also tricked him before. Why wouldn't Satan trick him even during a time like this? These problems and more worth examinations. And I ask my Muslim friends to do so. Until next time, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel Sira International and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.